Good day, everyone. I was born and raised in Detroit. Growing up there, I saw people like me running things. This is a courtroom, not a circus, so we're going to calm down. I'm sorry. What I found there was a passion that I didn't know existed. This is the bottom line. I am excited to free fall into the limitless possibilities with we the people. So many are fearful of the law. They think it's something that works against them. I think you need to begin to accept responsibility for your mistakes. We are the people. Banner McGavin claims he was blindsided when he was abruptly fired from his job as a church bagpiper. Wagner Potts says he warned the plaintiff several times not to disrupt the service, but he did so anyway. All rise. Court is now in session. The Honorable Judge Lauren Lake presiding. You may be seated. Hello, Your Honor. Hello. Good day, everyone. Good day. Good day. This is the case of McGavin versus Potts. Mr. McGavin, you are suing Mr. Potts for $7,200 for breach of contract. Is that correct? That's correct. Defendant Mr. Potts says that the plaintiff was abusing church privileges. Is that correct? Yes, Your Honor. Let's start with you, Mr. McGavin. What happened? Your Honor, I'm here today because I was unjustly fired from my job as a piper at Wagner Church, and I believe I'm owed two months' worth of salary. All right, so how long did you work there? I worked there for several years. And what did you do there? I was a piper. I played the bagpipes. Oh! I love that. Yeah. All right. So you worked there for two years? Mm -hmm. That's correct. And were you under contract or were you an independent contractor? Were you an employee? Yes, I, I have a contract here. Can I present this evidence? I'd like to see it. Thank you. And so, Mr. McGavin, can you quickly just kind of go through, because this is a long contract. Yes what your duties were. Yeah, so uh, I started off playing two days a week at the, the church on Wednesdays and Sundays, and I would play before and after ceremonies. Uh, Saturdays were added because uh, they asked, uh, Wagner asked if I could go to funerals with him and play. So it was three days a week. I was paid $300 a day, uh, $900 a week. So $300 per day, $900 per week. That's correct. And then you want to you're supposed to perform 30 minutes before and after mass. That's correct. And the agency has a right to dismiss the client if the above is not met. All right, Mr. Potts, I'd like to go to you. So you hired Mr. McGavin mm -hmm. to play in the church. Yes, Your Honor. All right. He worked there for two years. Yes, Your Honor. All right. And so tell us about the nature of his employment. He came in very friendly, very personable. He was wearing pretty much what he's wearing here today. We started conversing, having conversations. He mentioned he plays the bagpipes. That got me interested. So one day he came, played the bagpipes. Super exciting. And I decided to have him join our church two times a week. Uh, it got very popular. So I asked for three times a week. And uh, basically that's how our relationship began is uh, he kept coming to church and playing the bagpipes about three times a week. All right, this sounds like it's going well. What happens, Mr. McGavin? So I was told I was fired. What? With no reason, no cause. I never breached a contract, and I was told I was fired. Oh. Losing two months' worth of rent. $7,200 I would have been paid over two months, and I didn't breach a contract, I didn't break a rule, and I was just told not to return to Well, work. I mean, you don't just get fired, do you? I mean, that took a sharp turn quickly. Mr. Potts, you fired Mr. McGavin? I did, Your Honor, fire Mr. McGavin. Why is that? Well, uh, uh, a month back, he started playing during prayer service. He started playing while I was preaching and talking. Therefore, he was disrupting the, 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 the service, disturbing uh, the parishioners and the community. And as much as the community enjoyed his playing, they were a little disturbed by the times and moments he would play, which would be deemed inappropriate. You were disturbed. All right. I think um, is a better... It was... So I gave him a warning, gave him two warnings, uh, and then that third warning is when I fired Banner here. Okay, so Mr. McGavin, why did you decide to play even more than what was required? What, what made you decide to asking. do that? People were asking. They People... loved the bagpipes. Okay. And who am I to refuse the wonderful patrons of the Wagner Church? They would say to me things like, your music is uplifting to us. Your music makes us feel hope again in these dark times. There's nothing in the contract that says I can't do that. I went above and beyond. 
and I enjoyed playing, and they enjoyed me, and I got so. Great do you remember getting a warning from Mr. Potts? I remember him saying that maybe I shouldn't play it all the time, but I don't remember there being any rules about it. He just mentioned at times that maybe stop playing at certain times, and I said if the patrons are asking. Why should I deny them of something that they're enjoying? But, Your Honor, the patrons, excuse me, the patrons were asking him to also stop during the prayer service when he would play mm -hmm. inappropriately during my speeches. They also came to me asking you to stop playing at those inappropriate times. As much as it was appreciative, uh, he is a phenomenal talent, but uh, there are times where it was just completely, completely inappropriate and unacceptable. You never told me I was getting fired. Coming up. I was getting more attention, and he felt, ooh, I want the patrons to like me more. I want them to feel like I'm the star here, when truly it was all his ego. He named the church after himself. And later... She had a couple of glasses of wine. There was a dartboard with her husband's face on it, and she loved it, and she threw all the these darts at his face. The last thing I want to see at a party is my ex-husband's face, but you put it everywhere. We're back with the case of bagpiper Banner McGavin who brought his ex-employer, Wagner Potts, to court after he was fired. You never warned me I, I might lose my job for playing How for How many people. warnings did you give him, Mr. Potts? Your Honor, I gave him two warnings. Do you remember the two warnings? There was often times in passing where he would say something like, ooh, you're getting more attention than I am. I don't like that. It's all ego, Your Honor. It was all that I was getting more attention, and he felt, ooh, I want the patrons to like me more. I want them to feel like I'm the star here, when truly it was all his ego. He named a church after himself. I mean, if that's not ego, I don't know what is. Oh. I don't think I've ever heard of that. Uh, well, first off, Your Honor, I would like to say that I have started this church for 15 years. Uh, this is correct. My church started in my backyard and came to what it is today. Now, as far as being but jealous, but isn't the church or, to praise the Lord and not you? It is to praise the Lord, uh, and it's really not about me. I don't know where he is getting that. I think perhaps well, maybe he's he is getting it because it's called Wagner Church, and yeah. your name is Wagner Potts. Well, it's my church, Your Honor. I, I started this from from the grassroots, basically. I get it, but I don't. <laughs> it does seem a little ego driven. But Your Honor, don't you think it's a little ego driven for someone to play to be playing the bagpipes at times when I have asked them to not play the bagpipes after two warnings, specifically two warnings, and they still continue that behavior? I actually do think that that's inappropriate. And I do think, Mr. McGavin, that what you recognize in Mr. Potts is that maybe his service, his church, there is a portion of that church that is for worship of God, and then there's a portion of it where you felt like that was for worship of Wagner, right? Yes. And that irked you. Of course. And because I can kind of see, as you're testifying today, that you're a little disgusted by Mr. Potts trying to undermine your artistic license and you being able to do what you think musically would create a better service. That's correct. And while I don't agree that Mr. Wagner, I don't agree churches should be named after people, but I do understand that once you are hired to play at a church, you should follow the guidelines and the desires of the person who hired you. So if they say to you, hey, don't play at this time, what, what does it serve you to just not play? It's not your church. It's not McGavin church. So what does it serve you to just say, okay, I won't play. I'm only contracted to pay this, play this much anyway. That's all they're paying me for. Well, Your Honor, when I got hired, the idea of working there and being at that church was to make people happier and to bring some light in the dark times and to make their lives better. And you could do that before and after service like he asked you to do. But they ask for more. Okay, but it's not their church. Did you get requests for him to play more? I did requ get requests for him to play more, just not at those inappropriate times when he All was right. playing. Deemed so, by so you. I I've heard enough. I've heard enough. Um, what I don't like about this situation, Mr. Potts, is you have an employment contract. Once you do have that in place and it is clear about what you wanted him to do, it is not clear about what you wanted him not to do. But... 
I did hear in open court because I was going to challenge you and ask why aren't your warnings in writing? However, in court, Mr. Gavin has testified and confirmed that you did, in fact, give him those two warnings. I do believe in this instance, the plaintiff has, I think, allowed his opinion of you to influence the way in which he performed on this job. Something about Mr. Potts gets on your last nerve. The bagpipes are the way that you use to kind of cut through that. You feel like his ego is not allowing you to express yourself musically the way you want. But I, what I don't think you see is that his ego is just at war with your ego. At the end of the day, I do believe that both of you could have handled this better, but I do not feel Mr. McGavin, at this time, I can say for certain that Mr. Potts owes you $7,200 because you have admitted in open court that you defied his wishes for when he wanted you to play at his church that he paid you to play at. For that reason, judgment for the defendant, court is adjourned. All rise. Judge Lake has ruled in favor of the defendant. The plaintiff's case is dismissed. Maybe don't play at that time, and now you're acting like that's some sort of verbal agreement? I think you have things misconstrued. I think you have made things up in your head, and I find that your behavior is inappropriate. Your jealousy? I am not. It's ridiculous. <laughs> I am not jealous. All right, gentlemen, follow me, please. Coming up. She goes back into the house, climbs on top of the kitchen island with heels on and is dancing around how she's got a bottle of champagne, which she opens up and sprays That's all not over the room. True. I've that got this enormous like, like, me open, at all. like network featuring dynamic judges and live legal programming. Well, we're not oh, at your school, we're in my courtroom. Unique court shows. Where is any information about the company? Live legal news. That's what you should have done. And a commitment to justice. Either you tried or you did it. The next generation of court programming in one dynamic network. Justice Central. You're watching Justice Central. Stay tuned. You're watching Justice Central. You're watching We the People with Judge Lauren Lake. Melissa Tran claims she threw a party to cheer up her recently divorced friend but just ended up with a mess. Rhonda Chun says the plaintiff had photos of her ex everywhere, so she's not to blame if she had a few drinks. Good day, everyone. Good day. This is the case of Tran versus Chun. Ms. Tran, you are suing Ms. Chun for $700 for damaged items in your home. Is that correct? Yes, that is correct. And the defendant, Ms. Chun, you say it was not your fault it was plaintiff's fault yes all right let's start from the beginning what happened miss tran miss Rhonda here she's been my best friend since elementary school we went to high school together we went to brown together and then we moved to short hills together we really had the perfect life until Rhonda's husband jimmy ends up in a affair with a co-worker. Lord, I, th I asked you about damaged items in your home. Yeah. You're telling all Miss Chun's business. I can at least let her tell it. Well, what happened, Miss Chun? So my husband, he has been having an affair with his co-worker for oh. more than two years. Mm -hmm. Oh. And one day he just come home and tell me, I want to divorce you. I was totally in shock. I was. Oh my goodness. All right, I'll yeah. go back to you, plaintiff. I want to get to how is it that you say Miss Chun damaged the items in your home? I thought maybe it'd be a fun idea to throw her a divorce party. Mmm. Coming up. Yeah. She needed to soak up all that liquor. Oh my God. So yeah, I made her breakfast, you know, and I'm telling her the details of the previous night because she doesn't remember anything. We're back with best friends Melissa Tran and Rhonda Chun who are arguing over damage from a party. So you had the divorce party and you had it at your home? Yeah, so at first it was great. She had a couple of glasses of wine. There was a dartboard with her husband's face on it and she loved it and she threw all the these darts at his face. The last thing I want to see at a party is my 
ex-husband face, but you put it everywhere. She Why did you loved do that? I mean, it was like throwing darts at him, and so it was fun. It was just a fun idea. And she moved from drinking a couple of glasses to wine, you know, to drinking some liquor. And you know, wine before liquor and never sicker. But she was still okay. She was just wobbly. She goes back into the house, climbs on top of the kitchen island with heels on and is dancing around as she's got a bottle of champagne which she opens up and sprays That's all not over the true. room. That I've got this enormous like, like open all. like kitchen living room is area. Is it just me but isn't this whole party a setup for her to act just like this? I wanted her to have a good time. But not wild out. Yeah, I mean, not in my house, my God. So the just champagne insane. went everywhere. Champagne everywhere. Okay, and then I was trying to get her to stop drinking. I was trying to get her to come on down off of the kitchen island. Finally, three girls and I, we managed to get her down. I put her on the couch, and you know, by then she was like kind of woozy and wobbly. So I thought, okay, she's just gonna sleep it off. It's gonna be good. I went upstairs. I got her a blanket, I got her a pillow, I came back, she's gone, and instead there's vomit all over the couch. I wanted her to pay for the cleaning because it's common courtesy. I asked her in the morning when, <laughs> in the morning I made her breakfast. I actually made her breakfast. She needed it. She yeah. needed to soak up all that liquor. Oh my God. So yeah, I made her breakfast, you know, and I'm telling her the details of the previous night because she doesn't remember anything. Judge Lake's verdict when we the people returns. I think she got turned up at the party because you created a party, you hosted a party that was specifically designed for her to celebrate something that was extremely traumatic. So over drinking is probably something that someone could reasonably assume would happen. From there, vomit is something that happens usually after someone over drinks and what was interesting to me as I was writing down all the things you said she did you never said eat and I said to myself yup isn't that just how it happens I do not see so much damage that would be outside the scope or unreasonable given the circumstance and the type of party you threw cleaning up cushions these are things that you take responsibility for if you're throwing a party now had she jumped up on your draperies and swung from that and ripped them down and done something completely out of pocket, maybe then I could say she owes you for drapes. But when you have guests over and you're serving alcohol and you're not stopping anyone from drinking, if someone throws up, unfortunately, that's your responsibility. With that said, judgment for the defendant. Court is adjourned. All right. Judge Lake has ruled in favor of the defendant. The plaintiff's case is dismissed. I just can't believe that you went that overboard. You, that was just I wild. just got divorced for six months. I mean, How should I, I thought I knew you. I thought I knew you.